can you talk me through a, a an initial position that just commanded your attention and, and forced its way into the portfolio? Yeah. So uh, so this is one of the the new ideas we initiated, um, and the name of the stock is called Top Sports, um, and it trades out of Hong Kong. Um, so on, on the surface, and that's why initially this didn't really come into the portfolio when it first uh, became IPO, which is roughly two years ago. So it operates the retail stores for large sportswear um, brands. So it operates mostly for Nike and Adidas stores um, in China. So, you know, I guess the, the, the simple way of thinking is say, well, how hard is it just to run the stores? It's not your brand. It's not your merchandise. It's not your design. So, you know, this is not that appealing in terms of a, a value add for the whole supply chain. Then we started having a few interesting calls for the company. The first interesting thing that caught us attention is we talked to two of the very high ranking general managers um, that basically sort of started this whole thing for Top Sports. And we realized both of them have worked at Nike for 10 years before they came over to Top Sports. So that's one of the things that usually caught our attention. Um, you know, people say investors follow the money. Well, we follow the people. When someone that's clearly successful, highly qualified, and make an interesting career shift from working at Nike, which is highly reputable, to you know a domestic little-known sportswear um, retailing, that sort of caught our attention. So we dug a little bit deeper, and what I realized is two things. One is nobody in the country of China, or the world for that matter, operates over 8,000 sportswear stores. So the next closest one is about 5,000. And then in terms of the brands that run their own stores, I think the biggest one is 2,000. So the gap is huge. So why, why does it matter? Well, because if you run 8,000 stores across a big country with sophisticated tier one, two, three, um, different city dynamics and logistics, you become a real expert at putting your warehouses at the strategic position, share the warehouses. Um, you actually understand the real estate know-how. Every single mall, every single commercial street um, in the country really become someone that's an important partner to you because you actually put five big shops on one street or one mall. So you, you have an incredible negotiating power. You also know the local hiring dynamics really well. So you know how to manage the staff. But what's actually the most incredible thing about this company, and that go back to preparing for digital, is, is the most advanced ERP system that we have ever seen. So the, one of the ways to measure how sophisticated a, retailing, or a retailer is online is to see how connected is truly your offline and the online inventory. So most of the retailers still literally stash a separate warehouse and that's just for online shipping and then the physical inventory still run a separate system. But Top Sports, all 8,000 stores are actually warehouses for online. So if the online customer place an order, any one of the stores can seamlessly ship out a product that's the closest to the customer. So you could just think of the efficiency that you get to really ship within a few kilometers where the customers live. And then the second one is they have such a unique e-commerce strategy. So they basically say, we're not gonna run the Alibaba or the JD online big platform because that's a pricing war and we don't wanna get into that. But what we do have is our 8,000 stores, every staff have sort of a little checklist of their customers and they have their WeChat contact. So during COVID, what they do is they basically run sort of a, a human to human sales effort from all these sales staff would actually send out notifications and have WeChat groups and say, hey, I know you like Air Jordan 2, but this is a sneaker that I know you also like, and I have your size. Would you like me to ship it directly to your house? So they do a digital in their unique way, and that actually got to 30% of some of the sales for some of the large stores. So they completely impressed Nike and Adidas um, to start with. Um, I think the Nike CEO, um, whenever he comes to China, he would actually go look at the top sports retailing stores and say, we're going to learn a few things and go home and tell Foot Locker about it. Um, and then sort of secondly is sort of the customer loyalty data membership that all actually live within top sports. So going forward, if you are a sportswear brand, maybe not Nike and Adidas, but really anyone to think that as a brand or as a foreign brand, you can get into tier two to three cities is an absolute joke.
and you really become one partner of choice and that's top sports so you know back to the valuation top sports is actually trading a less than 20 times earnings and their earnings is pretty close to free cash flow and then we think that this is at least a double digit grower so incredibly appealing in terms of risk adjusted returns great story sounds very interesting far more than just a shoe shop yeah there's a lot of art managing a shoe shop well. <laughs>